live from KSAT 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It is Thursday, April 18th. Viva Fiesta. That's right. Happy Fiesta. We Happy are Fiesta. excited about this week and uh, tonight it starts with Fiesta Fiesta. It sure does. So the party with the purpose officially kicks off this evening with that event. This year it's happening over at the Alamo Dome at HEB Plaza. And you also might remember that last year Fiesta Fiesta was rained out. So let's go ahead and check in with Mike to see if that rain will affect this year's fun. I, I'm wondering if those were pictures of Fiesta Fiesta last year with the folks down there before it rained at Travis Park. Yeah, because it started off great last year and then <laughs> the heavens opened up. All right, we do have a little bit of uh, we do have some rain in the forecast, but I'm going to be very specific. Most of that's going to be staying up to the north. More on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. It is warm. It is humid out there. We have mist. We have some drizzle. We have some fog. We've got a lot of humidity. It's going to be a scorcher today. It's going to be hot and humid out there. We'll see some sunshine, and that's just going to add to the, the heat and humidity. So upper 80s and a lot of low 90s around the area, obviously, especially along the Rio Grande Valley. The aquifer went up half a foot yesterday, and good news. We've been talking about this going into the weekend. Some rain, especially in portions of the hill country, especially in the recharge zone. So we'll kind of jumping ahead of myself there. All right, mole it came down. Oak is on the low side as well, as well as pine and pecan. So here's what it looks like outside. Once again, we have got just kind of a, a yucky sort of a uh, start to the day. If you look at live cam over there by, or excuse me, as far as the, uh, let me go back to that picture. There we go. There's live cam over there by 10 at 410. And uh, yeah, it's just one of those mornings again. All right, visibility three quarters of a mile at Castroville have been dropping down Two at the airport, three at Port S.A. So like yesterday, we're going to start to see this fog kind of, you know, thicken up in places. A lot of mist around there as well. Temperatures once again are averaging about 15 degrees above normal. 70s all around with the exception over there at Lost Maples. All right, take a look at the computer model. So today clouds this morning, mist, drizzle, fog. We will see some sunshine by this afternoon. Notice up there. Fiesta Fiesta starts five o'clock and uh, notice how there's some rain up there, but that's staying up to the north. Now there is the chance though that some of those storms may be on the strong, potentially severe side. The atmosphere is very, very volatile. So especially up there in the hill country, uh, high winds and large hail would be the biggest threats. 80 at noon, like I said, 88 high temperature. Heat index is going to feel like it's well up into the 90s. And as far as the weekend goes, we do have more rain in the forecast. We'll talk about that and still looks fantastic for the river parade on Monday. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, RJ, out of the corner of my eye, I saw a bunch of flashing lights. Yes, we are not off to a great start. If uh, Happy Fiesta Fiesta Day, everybody. But unfortunately, things not looking great right now on the highways right now. Three accidents to let you know about. So let's start here with the biggest one that we're seeing south of downtown. This is going to be 90 eastbound there at the I-35 south exit ramp. So you see our uh, highway signs there. This is that 35 south exit to Laredo and then we have the 90 traffic still kind of getting through there, but that's going to be affecting all of our drivers that are going to be exiting off to the south side of town. Let's show you your maps real quick, show you an indication of what we're looking at right now. So obviously traffic still kind of getting through this area, especially if you're on the eastbound lanes of 90, but if you're trying to get on 35 from 90, you will not be able to at the moment right now. Again, 90 eastbound exit at I-35. That ramp has been shut down for the moment due to a crash. Uh, looks like it might have may have involved a couple of vehicles so we will continue to monitor that and see how things go on that part of town again the south side of uh, San Antonio here we have a crash being reported on the northwest side this is going to be on Vance Jackson off of I-10 this is going to be westbound so it's not on the highway but right there on the access road there Vance Jackson off of Interstate 10 westbound and we have another crash that we want to let you know about here this is State Highway 151 this is going to be westbound at Loop 410 and we have one main lane closed here as part of the westbound lanes 151 all of our drivers headed out to 151 a little bit past uh, West Military Drive and we actually have a camera out there too to show you what is going on let's see if I could find that one here real quick there it is all right 151 at West Military Drive right there we have this crash again westbound lanes of uh, 151 at West Military Drive causing some major delays there at the moment. So three major incidents to let you know about and we will continue to follow all of those give you more updates here but of course Fiesta is kicking off today and it's important to remember to celebrate safely even before you head to the party and that includes making sure that you have a sober ride home. Our Avery Everett shares an important message from two families who lost loved ones to drunk drivers. It's been really hard. 
For Ulyssa Valero's family. Some days are better than others, but we miss her. Every day has been hard to bear since her death. She had a big heart. She would help everybody. She was hit and killed by a drunk driver three months ago. Now her family is hoping her story will stop people from drinking and driving during Fiesta. It's scary because we know a lot of drinking goes on. And they're not alone. In 2016, myself and my family were hit head on by a drunk driver. Aziza Salama lost her fiance in that crash. In our city, this is a huge problem. Now she helps run San Antonio's Free Riders program. It's a program that brings together more than a dozen bars. Their owners all pledge to provide free rides to prevent impaired driving. So someone sees a sticker like this in the bathroom. What are the next steps? Uh, it's as simple as just walking up to the bartender manager asking, hey, you know what? I think I've had too much to, draw, uh, to drink. Can, can I get a ride home? She wants this to be a solution for anyone who may have had one too many. We want to be preventive. We don't want to be reactive. So much of Fiesta is celebrated on the streets of San Antonio, but construction across the city is causing even more concerns when it comes to drinking and driving. We really want to challenge people to make sure that they have a sober ride home. You can take somebody's life like the way Ulisa's life was taken. It was just so unexpected and it, it, it's hard. As traffic starts to flow in for Fiesta, these families are urging San Antonio to celebrate with safety top of mind. Anything can happen. People traveling to and from Fiesta events over the next week can cash in on a rideshare discount. We have that code for Uber on KSAT.com. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. We, the jury, find the defendant, Miranda Casares, guilty. Well, you heard it right there. Jury found Miranda Casares guilty in the death of her four year old stepson. Benjamin Severa. Now the jurors will reconvene this morning for the sentencing phase of that trial. Casares is now convicted of starving the little boy three years ago. Now during the trial, Benjamin's brother took the stand and said he saw Casares keep food from his brother. In closing arguments, the defense tried to persuade the jury this wasn't a case of starvation and the Bear County Medical Examiner got it wrong. He didn't die from starvation. Benjamin Severa most likely had autism. The history is there. Um, he, it's confirmed by April and Brandon that he uh, hits his head. This might have caused or contributed to his death. The state fired back, saying the Bear County Chief Medical Examiner got it right and ruled out all other possible causes of death. Switching gears 507 right now. Fest Fiesta festivities kick off today. And it's a great opportunity to add some colorful flair to your outfit and even perhaps your home decor. So if you're looking for Fiesta themed items, Goodwill is a good place to go. It has been collecting items throughout the year and they have now declared their West Commerce location as Goodwill Fiesta Central. So it has everything from clothing to flower crowns to home goods and much more. We know that people are on a budget, you know, always, and you want to save that money for your celebrations, for your, your chicken legs or whatever you're going to purchase at Fiesta events. So come to Goodwill, get started right with some budget pricing on your clothes. And by the way, when you shop with Goodwill, you are also giving back to the nonprofit's efforts of helping those with disadvantages. Well, KSAT has a chance for you to enjoy a special party at the Battle of Flowers and Fiesta Flambeau Parades. Scan these QR codes to purchase tickets. The tickets include assigned seating along the parade route, food, drinks, and a chance to hang out with some of us here at KSAT 12. While you're at it, you can also sign up to be a KSAT insider to be the first to get access to special events like these in the future. Well, the KSET Medal Days continue, and you can grab a free KSET Medal at various locations across the San Antonio area. So we have a brand new location for you to visit this morning. We're going to reveal that location coming up later on GMSA. Now, KSET actually has five different kinds of medals for you to collect, including one for Texas Eats, SA Live, and much more. So check out this story on our website for more details on which ones and the dates when you can get yours for free. And you want to headlines, a large scale outage is impacting people's ability to call the 911 emergency number in at least six cities in four different states, including Texas. A police department in Del Rio is among those, as well as the town of Kilgore up in East Texas. The entire state of South Dakota was also affected, as well as part of Nebraska and two departments in Nevada, including the Las Vegas Police Department. 
The cause of the outages are not known, but just yesterday analysis from the Department of Homeland Security revealed 911 call centers are likely a target for cyber attacks as hackers could steal personal information and police records in order to carry out additional crimes. ABC News has learned the Justice Department and attorneys for victims of Larry Nassar are in the final stages of negotiating a deal that would pay tens of millions of dollars to resolve claims that the FBI failed to investigate allegations of abuse by the former women's U.S. gymnastics team doctor. Now, sources for ABC News say no deal has been finalized and negotiations remain at a sensitive stage. Once finalized, the settlement will resolve a series of claims filed against the Justice Department and the FBI in 2022 by the long list of athletes and patients who reported abuse by Nasser. Now, this includes Maggie Nichols, Simone Biles, Ali Reisman, and Michaela Maroney. The DOJ's Inspector General report found that the FBI was notified of Nasser's behavior but failed to act for more than 14 months. During that period, Nasser is accused of abusing at least 40 more girls and women. Back here at home, 511, 73 degrees. We'll still ahead how Google Maps is making it easier to locate electric vehicle charging stations. And next, the new show that has people on social media buzzing. I caught part of this just yesterday. It looks interesting and <laughs> looking out there with live cam. A humid start to your day, 73, and looking for a little warm-up this afternoon as well. We're going to get the latest for the start of Fiesta with Mike in just a minute. A popular new Netflix reality series is a social experiment showing what happens when incarcerated men are allowed to run their own prison cell unit. Well, ABC's Steve Asunami has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, it's the new show that has people on social media buzzing. We run the pod now. Unlocked, a jail experiment shows what happens when the jail cells are unlocked and the prisoners run their own community in prison. No locks and no officers. And let y'all be a community. And this morning, the man who agreed to the experiment, Sheriff Eric Higgins, is speaking out to GMA. It showed that, that people can, can change, people can change for the better if given the opportunity. It takes time. Um, and it, it's a process. And, and you see that, pro that process go on in this, in this unit. Um, and that I want people to know that the, the doors are still open. That's what this is about. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more from Sheriff Higgins and what's next for the detention center. In this With your GMA First Look, I'm Steve Osintami, ABC News, Atlanta. In this As of last night, that was number one on Netflix. And I'm not one of those that reads the last page of a book, you know, uh -huh. to start things out. But I did skip to the last episode you did? to see how the experiment worked out. Yeah. I'm not going to give it away, uh, obviously. Okay, yeah. well, maybe in a commercial break. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 516, <laughs> 73 degrees. Let's look out there with Transguide. I saw some flashing lights over at 151 at West Military Drive. We're going to check in with RJ Marcus very soon and also look there at Highway 90. I'm your overly competitive brother. I'm ready for a rematch. Game on. I've been practicing. What, the cello? You want me to lower the hoop? Mm. Ah, foul. What are you going to tell me again? Foul! Yeah. Foul, bro! Okay, take a free shot. Go ahead, Max. I'm about to get served. <laughs> Seriously? Get all stayed. Save money and be protected from mayhem, like me. Love you, Mom. Wait till your father gets home. Dry skin is sensitive skin, too. And it's natural. Treat it that way. Savino Daily Moisture with Prebiotic Oat is proven to moisturize dry skin all day. You'll love our formula for face, too. Avino. Welcome to Blue Buffalo's One Taste Is All It Takes. Gil wants food that tastes good. If he doesn't like his food, he will walk away. We sent you Blue Tasteful's dry food. He devoured it. Clearly, he was a big fan. It's healthy and he loves it. Pick up Blue Tasteful's today. Welcome back, 519 on our first day of Fiesta, and things do not look good to start out on the roads. Yeah, guys, wow. hopefully we're getting all of our bad uh, traffic vibes out of the way yeah. before things get really busy later today, especially when we talk about uh, things going on there at Fiesta Fiesta and uh, all the other things that we're going to be seeing throughout the rest of the weekend. Weekend, all right, 90 eastbound, you're looking at the Transguide traffic camera. Uh, we have the exit 235 south completely shut down there from 90 east to 35 south. You do see here 
multiple uh, emergency vehicles are on the scene in this uh, major crash involving a couple of vehicles is what I'm hearing at the moment right now, but still trying to get a little bit more confirmation on what exactly is going on there. So this is going to be again south of the downtown area for all of our folks coming in 90 east and again 35 southbound is shut down at the moment and that's what our maps indicating right now based on that uh, icon right there. Um, and I'm sure that we'll start to see a little bit of our traffic maps indicate some backup here in this area as we get more people coming through that side of town. We also have a crash being reported on the near northwest side Vance Jackson off of I-10 westbound. Uh, so this is actually on Vance Jackson. Uh, so it's a little bit off the highway, but still pretty interesting uh, or at least a road that a lot of people use, especially to get around in that part of the area. And we also have this other crash being reported here. 151. This is going to be the westbound lanes right there at Loop 410, a little bit past West Military Drive for all of our folks coming out of the 151 area headed towards Loop 410. We have at least one main lane closed in that area. And that's not it. We also have a stalled vehicle on the east side of town right now. WWY Road at I-10 westbound. So things are certainly off to a very, very busy start right now. Again, 90 east. I-35 South, that exit ramp is closed, and then the other crash that we've been following for the past couple of, of uh, minutes or so has been this one here, 151 westbound at uh, West Military Drive. So already very, very busy outside. You know, Mike, I wanted to talk about some Fiesta things, yeah. <laughs> uh, including some of the parking garages near the Alamo Dome, but we'll, we'll hold off. We'll wait till these things kind of get cleared out. You know, and that, that accident there, 9035, because you think about all the traffic that comes in you oh, know, yeah. eastbound on 90 there, and even if it heads towards downtown, that's still going to be yeah. a troublemaker if you don't clear it yeah. up soon. So, all right, thank you very much, sir. Beautiful picture, and yep, Viva Fiesta. That is gorgeous, and it's not uh, such a pretty start. This is the camera over there at 10 at I-10. We are looking down toward the uh, kind of the south to southwest. This is traffic on westbound 10. Um, a lot of fog, a lot of mist around the area as well. Visibility is down to three quarters of a mile at Castroville, two at the airport, two and a half New Braunfels. So it seems to be kind of confined just uh, right there on the north and uh, north and west side of the metropolitan area. But as the morning rolls on, it's going to get thicker at times. It's going to spread like it usually does. So there's that 10% little chance for the little sprinkly showers out there and or heavy mist drizzle, if you will, as well as some of the fog temperatures in the low 70s going to stay steady all morning long. And we will make it up to 80 at noon and then not necessarily a good thing to see some sunshine today because that's just going to add to the, the heat and humidity. 88 degrees, about uh, 8 above normal, anywhere from 8 to 10 degrees above normal. And then you factor in the humidity and you can add a good oh, 5, 6, 7 degrees to that. So it's going to feel like it's in the low to mid 90s around here. The humidity is going to be sticking around all day long. We're going to have these dew points well up into the 70s. So. Any coscaronis that uh, get broken over your head is just going to have that, you know, all the confetti is just going to kind of stick to you with all that humidity. We do get a bit of a break tomorrow in the humidity. The couple of weather features are going to start to lie across the area. Now, tomorrow is going to be sort of a, uh, a tranquil day, if you will, but then things pick up on Saturday. First of all, as far as today is concerned, here's a couple of the sprinkly showers around this morning. Lots of clouds. We will see some of the clouds clear out by the start of Fiesta Fiesta. It actually gets underway at 4 o'clock. Fiona and I are going to be taking stage about to 515 and all the folks down there at the HEB Plaza at the Alamo Dome. So we go on in through the evening hours. Now it is going to be very hot and humid, but notice how computer models and a couple others are in agreement with this, that they keep that up to the north throughout the evening hours. Now that will just kind of linger around in portions of the hill country. The thing we're gonna have to watch out for, though, is some of those storms may become strong to potentially severe. Actually, Storm Prediction Center, remember, they moved this line back up into the hill country, brought it back down, and then added a two on a scale of one to five up there in the hill country. So the atmosphere is very, very volatile. If anything does pop, it could become strong to potentially severe. But the question is, is anything going to pop around here? And like I said, it looks like it is going to just stay further up to the north. Obviously, we're going to keep a close eye on this later on this afternoon. 88 today, bit of a break in temperatures tomorrow. Saturday is still looking like a wet day, especially in the afternoon, overnight. Potentially some uh, good rain in parts of the hill country, just north of Bear County where it's needed with that drought situation. Then drier, cooler air moves on in here, and it's looking really good still for the River Parade on Monday. More after this. Welcome back 527 Google Maps is launching a new feature for electric vehicle drivers. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the details in today's Tech Bytes. 
In today's Tech Bytes, help for electric vehicle drivers. Google Maps is adding features to make it easier to find charging stations. They include real-time information about availability and charging speeds. Google says it will start rolling out the feature in the coming months. TikTok is rolling out a new photo sharing app that's similar to Instagram, but you'll be able to write headlines for images above your captions. For now, the app is only available to select Android and iOS users in Canada and Australia. It's not clear when it will launch in the U.S. Finally, the newest robot from Boston Dynamics. It's the all-electric Atlas. The company says it's smaller and lighter than earlier versions, which operated through a hydraulic system. Atlas is still being developed, so no word yet on when it might hit the market. But if you ask me, that robot looks like it's in great shape. Must be all that circuit training. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. You got Mike laughing on that one. <laughs> Time now, 528. And 73 degrees for now. A local high school track star going the distance. Up next, the secret to success behind Bernie Champion's distant running prodigy. And ahead on GMSA at six, tubers on the San Marcos River will be asked to keep it clean this summer. How a new can ban could cost you money if you're not paying attention. And a good morning to you. Viva Fiesta. It is Thursday, April 18th. Yeah, we've been kind of waiting for this moment, and it's officially starting are. today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it seems like it, it came quicker this year. Yeah. I think just because yeah. we had the eclipse thrown in there yes. and all the different mm -hmm. events going on. I think you're right and, about that. And Easter and everything. Uh, it's not starting off awfully pretty out there. We have got just kind of murky conditions like the past couple of days with a lot of fog. This is the camera over there at 10 at 410 on the northwest side. Actually, this picture has gotten a little bit better. Now, granted, this camera is on top of the building right there at 10 at Callahan. Uh, uh, so not down at the surface, obviously up higher in the clouds, but still it's it's a murky start to the morning. Got, got a lot of mist as well. So the roads are definitely on the damp side. 72 degrees. Normal low temperature again, it's upper 50s. We are 10, 15 degrees above normal like the past few days, and the dew point remains very high. And when those numbers are running neck and neck like that, you've got relative humidities that are in the upper 90s. Little bit or no wind out there, and you've got a lot of the ingredients for some fog. So visibility hasn't changed too much in the past about 15 minutes. Still three miles at the airport, excuse me, three quarters of a mile at Castroville, two up the road at Bernie, two and a half at New Braunfels. And this is going to continue to go back and forth. We'll be dealing with it for the next few hours all the way through the morning commute. Everybody with uh, only two exceptions down to 68. Yeah, I don't know if you can call that cooling down to 68, but it has dropped a few degrees there in Bernie. Mold, oak, pine, and pecan are all on the low side. Looks like oak season is finally just another fond memory. Partly cloudy today. That's just going to add to just the steamy hot conditions out there. We're going to be upper 80s and low 90s, hot and humid. Of course, we're going to have heat index readings to deal with. Lots of water out there if you are going to be outside. And there will be some storms tonight up to the north. Some of those may be on the strong, potentially severe side. We'll talk more about that in a second. And then tomorrow, we're going to have a, a fair amount of clouds hanging around here. Not quite as hot. We will have temperatures drop down actually closer to normal tomorrow. Saturday is going to be the wet day still. It's looking like we have uh, the showers and thunderstorms develop in the afternoon, then going into nighttime and early, early on Sunday. And there could be a couple of heavier downpours, especially in portions of the hill country just north of San Antonio, where that's the some of the, the worst drought going on right now. So that's pretty much good news. Hopefully we don't have any flooding issues, obviously. And then Sunday, the rest of Sunday and the river parade on Monday looks great coolish kind of evenings uh, Monday night. So it's going to be just fantastic weather for the river parade. More details on what to expect tonight coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, RJ, still got those problems out there? All right, Mike, yeah, it's been very busy on the roads right now, just off in weird, off and running here, 5.30 in the morning, so let's get you updated on some things. Uh, first of all, that crash there, 90 at 90 eastbound at 35 south, that has been cleared out, so good job by our tech stock crews to reopen that section of 90, 35 southbound, so we're good to go there. So we still have this crash being reported, 151 westbound at West Military Drive. This is our camera right there, West Military, so it's a little bit past West Military headed up to 410 um, and you can see that we are getting traffic on the left hand side but we still have that one main lane blocked on the right hand side for all of our folks coming on 151 westbound there at West Military Drive. Let's show you what this looks like on our maps again coming up to the 410 area so not causing too many delays right now but something we will continue to monitor especially as we get more people on the roads during our five o'clock hour uh, again one main lane closed there. We still have a crash being reported on the near northwest side I-10. Uh, this is going to be 
westbound uh, Vance Jackson off of I-10 westbound, excuse me. And I'm going to check with the fire department here in a bit because I think they may be clearing this one out, but this is still being seen by our maps right now at the moment. And we still have a stalled vehicle being reported I-10 westbound on the east side of town there at uh, North WW White Road. You do see that traffic is still moving through this area. Again, this is going to be for all of our folks coming in uh, from that 410 area headed over to the Frost Bank Center Drive. Uh, so everything else looking good as far as the outer parts of 410. As you can see, most of our activity concentrated within the downtown area and be inside Loop 410. Everything else outside looking pretty good with the exception of some construction that we're still seeing over in the Live Oak area. But we will continue to follow the very latest on this and give you more details here in just a bit. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Wow, busy morning so far, Mike and RJ. Thank you guys. Well, we're just hours away from the city's biggest party of the year. Well, the kickoff to Fiesta 2024 is at the Alamo Dome HB Plaza. Our Patty Santos is there this morning where crews have been setting up since last night. Good morning, Patty. Good morning, and I bet you can guess where I am. I'm in the carnival section of this event, but the stage and the vendors starting up, setting up since yesterday. In just a few hours, this place is going to look and smell a lot different. So you're probably wondering what time does this get started? The event gets started at four today. This area is going to be filled with color and the smells of Fiesta. Fiesta Fiesta 2024 kickoff is from four to 11 tonight here at the Alamo Dome HEB Plaza and it's free. It's the first time that it's held at this location and of course weather is always a factor that organizers are watching and they're keeping their fingers crossed for good weather. There are 11 days of events to choose from. Today is just day one. Every day will be presented a listing of what events are happening during that day. So it's a great way to stay updated on all the latest information. And again, we're excited to get Fiesta started. And remember, the Fiesta events are all for uh, fundraising for local nonprofits. That is why they call it the Fiesta with a Purpose. We'll send it back to you guys. Thank you, Patty. Well, K-Set Metal Days are back, and you can grab a free K-Set Metal at various locations across the San Antonio area. We have a brand new location for you to visit this morning. We're going to reveal that location coming up later in GMSA. Well, KSET actually has five different kinds of medals for you to collect this year, so you can check out the story on our website, KSET.com, to see when you can get yours for free. In news this morning, a woman is being charged again after she was arrested and charged earlier for stealing money from local families who gave her money for headstones and never got them. Now, weeks ago, we told you about Elena Moreno, who is a headstone business owner in San Antonio. Twelve people told KSET they gave her money, and, the and never got the headstones. Now Moreno is under arrest again, charged with stealing $42,000 from a combined 15 victims. That is a second degree felony. She's since bonded out of jail and we followed the story for months and have several articles about Moreno on our website right now. Horse carriages have been used in San Antonio since at least the mid 1800s, but not everyone likes them. And once again, there are calls to get rid of them. City Council has talked about banning horse-drawn carriages for years. They've talked about it. In November of 2022, two council members requested a plan to phase out those horse-drawn carriages we see downtown and are popular with tourists. But it just wasn't until yesterday the request finally made its way to the council's governance committee, which voted unanimously to kick the idea over to another committee for further consideration. People for the ban argue that making horses pull oversized loads is dangerous for them and for people in the downtown area. As for those who profit from the carriage business, they say the city hasn't talked with them regarding the issue or any concerns. Once again, we're trying to be brushed under the rug and have changes made without bringing it to a discussion like we were promised eight, 16 months ago. Many people romanticize the idea of horse-drawn carriages in San Antonio, but the reality is that they don't belong in our city streets, especially not downtown. Not everyone wants to ban horse-drawn carriages altogether here in the Alamo City. District 2 Councilman Jalen McKee Rodriguez thinks moving them to a major park could work. In your morning headlines, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says Israel will soon decide whether how to respond to Iran's major air assault earlier this week, brushing off calls for restraint. Israel has vowed to respond to Iran's attack, leaving the region bracing for further escalation after months of fighting in Gaza. Israel's allies have been urging Israel to hold back on any response.
In Washington, the House could vote on a set of bills to provide foreign aid and potentially ban TikTok as soon as Saturday. Big weekend on the Hill. They stand a good chance of passing now that two powerful and unexpected allies are united behind them. House Speaker Mike Johnson likely to get Democratic votes he needs for his new aid package. President Biden is now throwing his support behind the set of bills. The ban would keep the platform out of U.S. app stores unless it cuts ties with its Chinese parent company. Time now is 540 and 72 degrees for now. A local high school track star taking the nation by storm up next. What keeps birdie champions distance running prodigy going and going. And looking out there with a live cam, not too bad right now, but it's a little humid out there at 72 degrees. And if you are going out to celebrate Fiesta on the first day, uh, prepare for some warm weather. We'll be right back. Welcome back, just about 544. Take a look. This is sophomore Elizabeth Leachman. She's a Bernie Champions distance running prodigy. Maybe it's a bit of a mouthful. Leachman is right there with the best of the best in the track world right now. And as case at 12's Mary Roaming Jerva shows us, the 16 year old is responsible for several national records and looks to carry that momentum into UIL regionals this weekend. When Bernie champions Elizabeth Leachman steps foot on the track, there's a shift in energy. She's a once in a lifetime athlete and wise beyond her years. I'm usually flipping the lights on at 5:45 in the morning. She's already here running, uh, so she's relentless in her effort. Leachman is a bona fide gold medal magnet and her epic solo run to break the national high school 5k record last month inched her closer to qualifying for the U.S. Olympic trials. Qualifying for the trials would definitely be an honor and it would be amazing if that opportunity came up but UIL season is kind of my focus right now. At 16 years old Leachman is the whole package. She's an exceptional student and athlete and has stayed grounded under the spotlight. My parents will tell almost anyone, you know, if I don't want to do this in college, I'm not going to do this in college. That really helps knowing that I'm the one choosing to be here every day. Early injuries have challenged Leachman, but her use of cross training has helped her ease her way back into full form. Eventually the times followed just with my health returning, I think, but yeah, I mean, it definitely was great because it was a big risk to take for me and it was definitely scary. And Leachman's story is really just beginning. Her goal right now is to qualify for state in her trio of events at regionals this weekend. From Bernie, Mary Rominger, KSAT 12 Sports, back to you. Thank you, Mary. 545, 72 degrees. Look out there with TransGuide. Hopefully things are looking a little better there on the camera shots. I got thumbs up from RJ. That's good news. A look here at 281. The quarry looks good so far. We're going to get a check back in with RJ. All right, 549 right now, and it has certainly been an eventful start to our Thursday morning as we get set for Fiesta. But some good news here is that we have cleared out our two major crashes that we've seen from earlier this morning. That one was at 90 at 35. That one has been cleared out. And then this one right here, 151 at West Military Drive. We are cleared that one out as well, according to what we're looking at here on our TransGuy traffic cameras. Uh, still have the map going here because uh, there was a little bit of delays in this area. So just want to give you an indication of some of the delays we saw here backed up to West Military military drive, but things are starting to look a little bit better out there for all of our folks on 151 and 410 uh, east side of town. We still have a couple stalled vehicles in this area. The biggest one being there, I-10 westbound at WW White Road, so uh, not causing too many delays for all of our folks coming in from 410 area, but uh, still something to keep in mind if you are headed out to maybe the Frostbank Center Drive area and uh, maybe that East Houston Street area as well. All right, we've been talking, of course, Fiesta. We are getting ready to go and uh, some things to let you know about in terms of what we're going to see there later on at uh, Fiesta Fiesta. So, of course, that starts later today, basically from 4 o'clock to 11 p.m. Things are going to get packed around the Alamo Dome area right there. We have HB Plaza that's going to be hosting Fiesta Fiesta. We also have Fiesta Carnival starting right there. So as far as parking garages here, of course, uh, the city is advising for folks to go ahead and use those parking garages so they can, don't have to struggle with parking around the Alamo Dome area. We have the Martinez lot, that is a city owned lot right there at South Presa and uh, Cesar Chavez. And we have the Alamo lot right there on South Alamo. 
And we also have the Convention Center lot right there at Convention Way, right there at Markets as well. So things are going to get very busy in that area. I, for one, kind of glad that uh, the Fiesta Carnival and uh, the Fiesta Fiesta there at HEB Plaza Kind of glad that they're going to be all in the same area. Kind of adds just more to this event, and of course, Fiesta kicking off. Yeah, didn't really think about that. Yes, well, yes. Yeah. that they're True. next door to each other right now. So yeah, yeah folks, can have a really good time. So it's going to be so fun out there. Always love it, and the rest is on you. How exciting, yes. Mike? <laughs> yeah, me and me and Fiona. Mm -hmm. I should say Fiona and I. Pardon the grammar. So, <laughs> anyway. but yeah, I mean, and everybody is just always in such a great mood, and all the military ambassadors and everything out there. So, what do we call stuff? A rose among thorns? Yes. Yeah. Aww. And what better way to, you know, the, show your demonstrative right. love than red roses for someone. I am the leaf to the right. Yes, you are. <laughs> or that clot of dirt there on the ground. So anyway, oh. uh, <laughs> it's a beautiful picture. Very jealous of your gorgeous red roses right there. So thank you so much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. Just think about the rose picture and don't look at this one because it is murky out there. We got a lot of mist. We have some fog. Castroville has actually come up just a little bit. It has gotten thicker there at Bernie Stage. Uh, the airport as well as New Braunfels, three miles, and that's the thickest around the area right now. It will continue throughout the rest of the morning. This mist drizzled, damp roads. Just in a, in a situation like this, kind of assume that most of the roads are going to be on the damp side this morning. So just kind of slow down, take it easy, allow yourself some extra time. A little bit of mist and drizzle throughout the rest of the morning and we'll make it up to 80 at noon. So already at the normal high temperature, then we continue up from there. We're going to see more sunshine today than we've seen the past couple of days. That's going to put us in the upper 80s here in town and there's going to be some 90s maybe in your backyard and definitely in the Rio Grande Valley. Then you factor in the humidity on top of that. And so yeah, it's going to be a hot steamy one for the start of Fiesta. All right, here's the few little showers out there this morning or sprinkles and everything. Cloudy skies through the rest of the morning and then more sunshine later on today, which is again just going to add to the, the steamy factor out there. Fiesta Fiesta gets underway actually at four o'clock. A lot of things get going five, five thirty six. But notice how a lot of computer models don't have anything showing up as far as any rain that is staying up to the north through this evening and with a few thunderstorms. Now, some of those thunderstorms may be on the strong side. As a matter of fact, Storm Prediction Center did bump this up to a two from say, Bandera up in toward Blanco, Kerrville, Fredericksburg, two on a scale of one to five as far as the threat for high winds and hail reaching severe levels, 60 mile per hour winds or uh, basically uh, ping pong ball sized hail, one inch diameter hail. And then there is the risk here, but the odds of rain are not that great. If something does pop, it can become strong, severe fairly easily because of the volatile atmosphere that we have. And that sun's only going to add to that. Now, jump ahead to Saturday. Um, we're going to have a front lying in the area, and that is going to help with the rain chances. Notice how the, most of the rain is still forecast to be up there uh, right around portions of the hill country, and we're looking at maybe a couple of inches of rain, some heavier pockets on top of that, which is good because that's where some of the, the, the worst drought is right now. So that would really help out. Today, hot and steamy. Great start to Fiesta. Hey, it's Fiesta. And then tomorrow, not as hot. A lot of clouds, rain on Saturday, especially in the afternoon and late Saturday night, overnight, early Sunday. Drier air comes in here. Sunday afternoon looks great. Monday for the River Parade looks great. Then it's going to start to heat up again as we go into the middle part of next week. More after this. How would you like to ride in a Fiesta Parade? Uh, in the Fiesta Parade, uh, scan the QR code on your screen and tell us what you love about Battle of Flowers to chance to ride on a float and show us your shoes. Battle of Flowers Parade is coming up on Friday, April 26th. Well, still to come in the next hour of GMSA, we're live at the Alamo Dome for the start of Fiesta. We'll chat with Patty Santos before the party kicks off later today. Plus, if you're on a Fiesta theme budget, we've got you covered how you can add some colorful flair to your wardrobe this season. And up next, tubers on the San Marcos River will be asked to keep it clean this summer. How a new Kanban could cost you money if you're not extra careful. And checking the roads with Transguide. We've had an active hour on the roads for an early Thursday morning and day one of Fiesta. RJ has you covered. We'll be back.